now. I've pre-loosened all the screws with an impact driver because it's going to be quite dull watching me undo bits and pieces. So I'll just do a couple of these just to show you and bring you back when they're all been done. Right, screws are out. Come back to that shortly. So, what have we got in here? Our gear change assembly. A points assembly. Kick start, kick start spring. That's it really. Once we get that through there. Right. Well it looks suspiciously to me like it's just two screws holding that plate in. Screw for that. Remove the grommet and our point should come up. But I'm going to look in the workshop manual first, just in case we have to remove the central bolt for the uh, points cam. I don't imagine you do, but I'll just check. Yeah, I suspected. Let's uh, undo this clip. Bolt. Undo the two screws. Once plate should come off. It's said to scribe a line, which I should really do. Although, for memory's sake. It's pretty much exactly in the middle of the slots, so that'll do. Just gently put this out. There we go. And we have one on the left. We have a rubber grommet going through the case, which we need to try and push through. The screw cover is too big. And the pick is too small. Okay. I'll find something suitable for that. We'll move on from there and get back and don't see the pressure. Drop it through a hole. Right, in the absence of the proper tool, I found a small punch. It fits snugly in there and then very gently, very gently, tapped it left and right, up and down, and eventually off it comes. So, not the proper tool, but uh, perfectly optional. Right, Kickstarter next. It seems to be springs held in by screw there. And it just seems to crawl around and catch on the plate there. Uh, so let's undo this screw. We can see. Yes, yeah, so it's not enough. Nothing seems to be in there. Let's 
strange. Let me take a closer look. Right, quick look at the manual says that you don't need to remove screw A, which was suspiciously uh, loose anyway. It says to remove the plate and the spring together. I'm struggling to see how that works. I'm not entirely sure. There's nothing obvious either. Because that's under some pressure on there. It can't turn any more that way to loosen it. I'm assuming that plate is attached to that. Or attached to the middle of there. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to have to go and do some research because the manual is not very clear. It just says remove it, which I suppose I could leave her up underneath that to release that from there. Because I reckon that one there is going to be. Pretty difficult to get off. Let's try some pliers. Right, I've uh, been looking at it closer with the camera out of the way, and the only way that I can see of doing it, and this may be completely wrong, I will do some research as I promise, but if I put a screwdriver down like that. And hook it on the spring. Oops. Let me get a flat bladed screwdriver, that might be easier. Do that. So then the spring then sits there. And if I tap it gently. I'm not sure that's helped. Just try tapping it back. That can't be right, can it? No, nope, that can't be right either. Oh, there we go. Maybe it is right. It's off. Or is it? Why is that plate not coming off? There we go. So, is that plate going to come off there? I don't see we're any better off for that. Maybe that comes off with the uh, That comes off with the cover, but if it comes off with the cover, why do you need to remove the spring? Why does the manual tell you to remove the spring? I don't understand. Surely that must, yes, that must come off there. This is ridiculous. Why can't the manual be more specific? That must come off there. So why is that not coming off? Must come off. Okay, I'll turn you off again while I consult the parts book. Right, the uh, 
rain has stopped and hopefully, well, hasn't stopped but it's reduced a great deal. So hopefully the background noise you're picking up earlier has also stopped with it. Uh, it's also very gloomy in here for a while so hopefully that'll have got a bit better as well. Right, that plate I was struggling with before was stuck on the shaft. I had to put a little bit of heat in to try and persuade it to jiggle off which I did by getting uh, a bent puller leg behind it and tap, 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 tap to get it off. So next up is our gear change return spring, which you just undo. I'm hoping, yes. wants to come off before the nut does. Come on, there we go. Which releases the spring tension, in theory. Okay, there's a little washer there, which I think is applying a bit of sideways pressure. Let's get our pick. It would be helpful if I remember to bring uh, my magnet back. There you go. That's a little washer in there which I think is cocking over and stopping that coming out. In fact, it doesn't want to come out at all. No. Let's try and wiggle it and Whoa! There we go. It wanted to release in the end. So that was the, uh, the washer that's causing a problem. That's your cup. And then your spring which crosses over to go onto that post. Right, now if the workshop manual is to be believed, this has to come off. And there is a small... Grub screw, according to the workshop manual, which that seems to be there. Yep. Right, little tiny grub screw. Oh, don't tell me this is stuck as well. Uh, I'm assuming it splits on the joint. There's a joint in here which is offset castle shape. I'm assuming that, that has to split along those lines. I'm almost very reluctant to have things like this because of cast. There we go. Well, I'll say there you go. There I don't go. The spline so but it's dirty really from sitting for a very very long time right now it also says in the workshop manual 
to remove this. Don't think I'm going to get a socket on there. So let me go and find the right spanner. Right, I can just make out this uh, little locking tabs there and there, which are very small. Again, don't use screwdrivers as pry bars and blah blah blah. But sometimes you've got nothing else that'll do the job. Because these are very small. Right, lock tabs down. Small spanner to hand. Which is a 516th according to the, uh, the markings. Little tight on that one. There she goes. One out. Two out. Locking tab. Oh, that should in theory come off. But nothing seems to want to. Keep it very gentle. Tap. There we go. Right, so we have a drive. Yep. Yeah drive in there and a gasket. I've got to put my head in front of you one second to see what else is in there. Can't see anything. Right. Back we come to the side case then. And as far as I can see, we have one, two, three, four, five screws, which I pre loosened off camera just to make sure they would actually move. They were all required the impact gun to get going. But As you can see from the heads, they've never been off. They're uh, all unblemished, or they were until I got them. Right now, by my reckoning, if the workshop man is to believe, we've got the kickstart off, we've got the gear lever off, we've got the gear lever engaging dog, or whatever you want to call it, off, spring off. That's off. Points are off. That's off. No more screws. So I think with a gentle tap, A sausage, right. What have I done wrong? Clear some of this away so I've got a bit more room. I double checked and got all the fittings out, which I had, and I tapped and I tapped and I tapped, as it said in the workshop manual, and frankly, I was getting nowhere. 
So, once again, I made use of the uh, torch and I just lightly warmed around the gasket joint on this side of the motor, gave it a couple of taps and hey presto, off it came. So, safer I think to put a little bit of heat in than risk damaging the case, which is what I've done. So hopefully now, hopefully, hopefully, it will come off. Excuse me while I go in front of you for a second. Now what is the answer? I thought... I really thought we were going places there. There we go. In a case. Right, let me turn that towards you a bit more. Can you see that? Losing a bit of oil. Uh, here we have the uh, cast iron body pump, as one would hope. The gearbox is in there. Again, all the nuts look completely untouched. So I believe I can take the gearbox out in one hit, which will be my intention. I'm hoping I have to do nothing to the gearbox, to be honest, given it, everything appears to be in good nick so far. Ditto the cam. I'm pretty certain it'll be okay, but I shall have a look. So. The next job will be to start stripping down these internal components, which we shall come back to in a minute once I've had a quick look at the workshop manual to find out what I'm doing. Right, finally I've managed to get my extractor, which fits in threads in here, which hardly any of them, but I can feel it. maybe three visible, four perhaps. But anyway, it just uh, screws on there like that. There's no need to go super tight with it. Just want to make sure it's tight enough that it won't fall off. Which will probably do that. And then we need a socket. Yep. Start tightening it up. You see, you saw that fit a minute ago, didn't you? And now it won't. Why is that? Give that a little tap to encourage. Oh, that's tight. Yeah, that is really tight. Okay, I would have expected that to have popped off by now. Doesn't want to. Let me get me strong on. Wow, that's mega tight.
No, I'm really not happy with that at all. Let me just... Uh, Mind that. That really shouldn't be that tight. Okay. Should we again? No. Right, okay. Um, let me think. Just try typing as a metal hammer. Right, I'm um, sorry you, you missed that. I uh, gave it a few taps with a slightly heavier hammer. And uh, the next time I put the socket on, it just fell off. So, anyway. You can see how it works. The centre is now off. Thankfully. Now in here there's a, a Woodruff key. So we need to tap that down and knock it out and then we're going to replace this plate. So I'm going to have a rummage around to get the right tools. Next we're going to try tapping the Woodruff key down at the back to lift it at the front and then I'm about to get another drift onto it I hope. We shall see. Like that's lifted the front. I think we did this earlier on in the engine strip, but I'll show you. Then, there we go, one little tap, and out she comes. Put that over there with that. Right. So now we need to remove these screws, remove that plate, which is an oil seal in the middle, which will reveal our sprocket, which has got to come off. Or we can turn our attention to stripping the other side again and getting the gearbox out because until we get that shaft free of all its accoutrements we can't get the box out so let me find a screwdriver now these are likely to be very tight i think given how everything else has been but we shall see oh well that one wasn't which is good Right, well you can see what I'm going to do. I'll bring it back when the cover's off. Right, cover off. We have our rear drive sprocket, which is in excellent condition again. Which is secured by a large nut, which is then secured by a tab washer with a knocked over tab at the top here. So I'm going to have to find something quite slim to get underneath it because I've been it's been hammered down very well this one so I'll go and find something that'll get underneath that and we'll get that off this nut shouldn't be that tight but we shall see okay the tab wash has been knocked back I've used a chain through a vise to hold the sprocket steady the engine is braced up against this wood and the base that the vise is on now, famous last words, which is, these things really are coming back to haunt me. I said that these are not normally that tight, and the ones I've seen up so far in my uh, short experience with British bikes have never been that tight, and this one is absolutely rock solid. I've put heat into it. I don't have a socket I can get onto it, and the spanner I'm using won't fit squarely because of the angle of the case. Uh, 
and you can't give it a good knock because it tends to then just take the edges off the nut. So I'm going to, have to try and find out what size this nut is and see if I can borrow a deep socket or someone or a box spanner or I don't know, something like that that I can get over this and onto there. As you can see, it's drawn blood trying to sort this stupid thing out. Um, so once again, after a very short amount of work, we are stuck. So I'm going to have to find a solution. And it's going to be the holidays in a few days. So the chances of me getting anything for a while are slim. Um, anyway, I'll see what I come up with, but I'm going to have to move on to something else. Right, continuing my irritation with this large nut, I had a quick look online and my assertion that they weren't usually that tight appears to have been wrong. It's just the ones I've come across on the Triumph and another old BSA I had, they just happened to be loose, which they shouldn't have been. So apparently these are done up very tight. So I have ordered a box spanner, which will hopefully fit that so I can get a right good swing at it. And I've also realized now, which I hadn't initially, is I only need this off to get high gear out of the gearbox. The rest of the gearbox, which is uh, turning on that shaft, can be removed without taking this nut off. So I'm getting on with the frame at the minute, but unless the uh, socket takes a very long time to come, because we're right in the middle of Christmas post as I record this, I will just take the gearbox out and leave high gear and this nut until later. Obviously it's all going to come out because I need to replace every seal in the engine because after sitting around for uh, however many years it is now, uh, 71 is 29 and 20 is 49 years, nearly 50 years. These seals are very nearly 50 years old. So they've all got to be changed. In fact, whilst I'm standing here talking to you, let me just move the camera across and show you something else, which I hadn't realised. Just as I was looking at the large nut, I glanced across, and I just realised that this seal, which will have to be changed because I think it's leaking, I think it is anyway, um, has been staked in in four places, obviously done at the factory. Uh, I should have to look into that as well because it seems a bit over the top for a push-in seal. Is that a push-in seal? I don't know. I'm assuming that's the seal. Oh well, I shall see when I split the cases. I just happened to notice that. So something else I'll have to look at, look into, find out more about because uh, I wasn't expecting to find staked-in seals. Anyway, that's just by the by an idle thought as I spotted it. I shall look into it. Okay, okay back to this irritating nut. I uh, lashed out on a large box section. No, not box section. Box spanner, which is the right size. So, let's Oh dear. And off it comes, followed by its locking washer. Chain's gone, which was holding the sprocket whilst I undid the large nut. So now, hopefully, hopefully that should move. Which it Oh, there we go. It has slightly. There we go. Right. So again, there's little to nowhere on that. I'll clean it off and find out if it's the original BSA one. But given that these haven't been removed, I'd have to say that was the original one. And once again, it barely looks used. So 
I don't know if you can see in there particularly well. Let me turn you around slightly. That would be a high gear, yeah, in there going through the bearing. You've got a, a seal of some description, which I'll worry about later. And that main shaft should spin independently of that, which it does. So now I can take the gearbox out and high gear out. So I'll spin you round and we'll see what's going on there. I've just undone the five nuts while you're away and I've moved the camera as well to uh, allow me to work more naturally right-handed. So there they are, they're the ones on there. Now, according to the manual, this should be tapped with a hide hammer to break the seal. And it also says it's doweled. Now, oh, that comes out anyway. Now, I'm not quite sure where you would hit it with a doweled hammer, to be perfectly honest. A doweled hammer. A uh, hide hammer. Um, because most of this stuff is quite fragile, I would have thought. Um, I think I'll put the kickstart ratchet back in there. Just give it a wiggle. No, I haven't done much either. I'll give it a gentle, gentle tap. Let's see if that does anything. Yes, there's some movement up there. All right, now I wonder how you meant to tap this out then. Let me just give that another gentle tap. Very gentle. Tap that, that's for sure. I wonder if that a gentle tap. this again. Yes, there we go. Come on, baby. Definitely moving now. Sticking down here and looking at that, that's where I think the dowel is because you can see a pin there. Uh, it's how to apply some gentle pressure to that. There we go, lovely jubbly. Right, no real effort required, just lots of wiggling. Good, good, good. Right, that can come back out. So hopefully now the entire gearbox will come out as one unit and nothing will fall apart. And there we go. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Right, I will do an inspection of that later, like everything else I'll be doing. Um, so this will be put to one side just for a minute. Now then, let me get something to wipe my hands and then I'll show you the inside. Right, so now we're inside, we have a spong loaded plunger here. We have high gear, which is still in the case through the bearing, and a needle bearing blind capped at the back. So if I'm right, I haven't looked at the manual again because I'm stupid. If I'm right, I can just tap high gear back through the case from the other side with a soft hammer, which is what we'll do now. So, a gentle tap here should knock that. Oh, there we go. <laughs> when I say gentle tap, I barely touched it. And out it comes, like that. So that can go with the rest of the gearbox components. 
Uh, or we go back to the other side now and remove the pinion gear, oil pump, all that sort of stuff. So that's the gearbox out. It will be inspected later. Right, we'll move on to the pump nut. The workshop manual says to uh, support the Conrad eyes with the bar through them, which I've done. I've also added two rubber dip pieces made from uh, old fuel line just to further protect the, uh, the eyes. And then on rest them on hardwood. Well, I didn't have any hardwood, just got bits of ordinary wood. Uh, because the pump nut is apparently very tight and also cat handed. In other words, you've got to tighten it as it were to undo it because the thread is reversed. So with those like that, I can then move down and do the uh, pump nut. So let's see if we can get you down there and have a look. And there it is. There's a lock washer between the outer one and this inner worm, which I have knocked over. I was expecting it to be a double lock washer, but it doesn't appear to be. So I'll have a look more closely when I get this off. I have given it an exploratory tweak because I imagined it was going to be very tight. And I wasn't wrong. Very, very tight indeed. So I managed to just crack it before you've come on camera. So all I need to do now is remember where I put the uh, socket, which is uh, further evidence of my doddery old age. Because there we are, because I can't remember where I put it. Right, okay. So hopefully this is now sufficiently. Oh, yeah, it's still tight. There we go, fine. So off it comes. And then the lock washer doesn't want to move at all. Okay. Uh, let me just abuse a screwdriver once again. There isn't a lot of gap there to work with. Come on, baby. Now you have to come off. There we go. Right, okay, so there's the other half of the design. The other half of the lock washer. Don't know if you can see that. We certainly will see it when I drop it on the floor, will you? That again, so it has in fact got a little eye tang which fits into the slot in the crank. So that will have to be replaced, added to the parts list. Now, according to the manual, this should follow it off. Also, the wrong thread, when I say reverse thread. So, let's just see, shall we? Oh, no, don't like that. Uh, let me just double check the manual. Okay, moment of slight hesitation there, as it, that didn't feel good. But I went back and looked, it's got to be right, and they gave it another quick turn, and lo and behold, it is right. So, it unscrews, the pump spins while you're doing it on its side. So, I'm even to panic. There we go. Very slight notchiness as the final bit comes off the pump spindle. There it is. So now I need to look at the workshop manual and find out exactly how the pump comes off. But it looks to me like it's a straightforward three nuts. But I shall double check. Is that a washer? No, not sure. 
sure what that is, have a look. And get some better light. Okay, let me just check and we'll come back and take the pump off. Right, manual consulted. It is indeed just these three nuts, so we're back to, back to normal direction for undoing things. Just take the pressure off each one first. I'm working back to front again because the camera's in the wrong position as it were. Right, they should all be hand tight now. And the washer. And the washer. And the washer. Now, the pump should pull off. And we shall see what's behind it. Oh. There must be oil ways, obviously. I'm not sure if there's any sort of pressure release valve other than that, but I shall find out. <sighs> or maybe not. Give it a gentle tap. Right, I'm going to turn you off and rearrange the camera because again I'm working the wrong way around. Oil pumps being a bit of a pain sadly. I was expecting just to be able to tap it gently side to side with the uh, soft hammer and get it off. But it was stuck. So I gently warmed around here and here with the hot air gun. Still warm, but that's got it moving. And it's still very tight. My word. Come on, baby. I'm not missing anything here, am I? Nope, there we go. And there drops out as I suspected. Another part of the uh, presumably oil pressure release system. So there should be a spring behind there as well, which we shall see in a second. No, it must be in the body. Anyway, that's the pump off. That will be cleaned out and checked. And as I suspected earlier, there is a washer on this, but I couldn't get it off because the pump body's in the way. So I must remember that, that goes back on before we're finished. Uh, so, you just get the pinion gear off. That'll have to come out. That should just slide off, which it does. Lovely jobly. Bush looks in good condition. Yep. Well grooved for oil circulation. Right, so. Turn our attention to this little devil. Oh, there's a the spring. My eyesight's terrible. There's the spring. I was expecting one, and there it is, in that hole there. I wish I had my eyes back. Anyway, so I do have a pinion puller. Whether it will fit this, we'll have to see. So I'll go and find it in my work box and bring it back. Right, the pinion puller is on. However, it's not a brilliant fit, uh, so I have to go gently with this because it doesn't fit as well behind the teeth as I would hope, but it is on. This bolt is shouldered inside to fit the end of the crank, so it shouldn't be a problem with that, hopefully, fingers crossed. 
that this might want to pull off rather than bring the pin in with it. So we shall see. We'll just do it up and give it a very gentle tap and see where we're up to. Something's happening. And off she comes. Excellente. Very good. I'm slightly nervous about that. As I say, it didn't grip particularly well. I'll show you the tool now while we're here. Okay, she hadn't used one before. Basically, they can you, see, can you see that? Yes. Basically, they sit behind that. And then the central bolt pushes on the end of the crank and pulls it off. Like so. Very good. Very happy. Right, so rotating our crank again, we have another key. So, do I have anything to get out with here? That is the answer. Right. Turn you off again, we'll take that off. Just assume when I come back that's gone because there's no point in showing you taking out yet another uh, Woodruff key, they're all the same. So just assume I've knocked that out, and then when we come back, we should be removing this. Okay, Woodruff key removed. I pre loosened that before you arrived because it's uh, fairly uneventful, hopefully. Or gooey muck, should be a ball in there somewhere. And another threaded piece of case. So, will that go on there? No, it won't. Okay. We'll have to find a spanner for that. Right, I don't actually have a metric spanner that will fit that, but I have got a, sorry, I don't have an imperial spanner that will fit that, but I do have a metric socket that's close, so that can come out. Lots of old grubby oil. Gauze filter, which is clean. Very good. I'll have to look in my parts book because I was expecting to find some sort of ball in there, but clearly not. That's strange. Maybe I'm just confused. I shall look. Nothing there. Okay, I shall look into that. And that is the timing side strip done, as far as I can see. The cam will come off with this case, I'm hoping, because there's nothing wrong with it, so there's no point disturbing it. So the next thing to do will be to split the cases. So I'll have a tidy up, clean up, put things away. And then uh, we'll come back and do that. All good stuff. <laughs>